Hey, good afternoon, everybody. I am Brian Polito, veteran comic book creator, and I am here to talk to you about this topic for indie comics creators, how to powerfully brand yourself. Now, you may be asking yourself, why the heck should I listen to this person? So let me give you a little bit of a background. So this year, 2021, I'm entering into my 30th year of being a comic book creator. I am most known for the character Lady Death, but also other characters like Evil Ernie. And here on these walls, you'll see some of the things that I've participated in. This is the Lady Death animated film that came out in 2005. And here are some of my publishing enterprises through the years. The character Evil Ernie, I've written Chucky, published Insane Clown Posse, written Megadeth, Texas Chainsaw Massacre, Lady Death, Purgatory, Nightmare on Elm Street, I've published Halloween, I've made comics in leather, etc, etc. Uh, very lucky, crossovers, Medieval Witchblade with Top Cow, and many, many others. Most recently, I've been known for the last seven years as the publisher of Coffin Comics, where we have used crowdfunding as a tool to get comics out to people. So in that scenario, I'm most known for Lady Death, Hell Witch, and the character La Muerta. And as we sit here in June of 2021, accumulatively, our company has raised somewhere in the area of four to five million dollars for comic book projects, which is truly remarkable. So I've given some thought to branding and figured I'd bring it to you. And there's a way you could listen to this panel where you go, well, this guy does these kinds of books. They're not my thing, so there's nothing I could learn from him. Or there's another way to listen, which is I'm going to lay out a bunch of things for your consideration, and maybe you will find some areas where you'll learn some things. Because, look, I love doing the comics that I do, but I'm excited for you to do the comics you want to do to find your actual expression. And branding may very well be a way to do that. So again, we are here for this panel for Indie Comics Creators, How to Powerfully Brand Yourself. So without further ado, let's get into it. What is a brand? Well, I would assert to you that a brand is more than a color, a logo. I actually think it's a state of mind for your company. It's a way to look at what type of outcome are you looking to produce for your company. So in the case of Coffin Comics, believe it or not, our outcome is to produce fun and excitement in the domain of rock and roll inspired supernatural comics. Full stop. That's exactly what we're about. So our actual content is, uh, is wild and crazy and not for everybody, but what our company motto is about is what I just mentioned and everything serves that. So again, I don't think your brand is just the product you, your color choices, the logos, it's defined by these in, indefinable aspects of you as a creator or you as a publisher. So yeah, it's a feeling that you create for other people. So to me, that's what a brand is. Now, another way to look at a brand is in the narrow way of viewing it. So you look at Nike and you see the swoosh and you go, well, that's their brand. And, and I would agree with you, that's a piece of it. But I, maybe Nike, just what it produces for people, that feeling of fitness and excitement, simple designs, you know, um, big celebrity athletes. I think that kind of feeling as a, as a person who may buy a, a pair of Nikes, you know, you feel like you're stepping into that kind of world. So I think there's other interpretations. So I think that's what a brand is. It's really a state of mind that you create for other people. So let's get right into it, shall we? Rule number one. Define your brand. So what do I mean by define your brand? Define why you need a brand. Uh, and why I assert you do need one as an individual creator in this giant world out there is that you are competing for market for, with market forces that are truly remarkable and unbelievable. Think of these giant companies like Apple, Google, others, captains of industry, and the marketing dollars, just the sheer dollars they put against things. You need to define yourself. And you'd want to define yourself so that you very quickly identify yourself to your potential customer, your potential patron. Um, so what I mean by that is it could be everything from your name, your logo, 
the color choices you use, the fonts. And so let me display it in the case of our company. In the case of our company, long ago, I defined that the colors black, white, and red are the colors that we're using. And in terms of all our branding and advertising, everything is around that color and that color combination. On occasion, we'll introduce colors like silver or gold, but the real fulcrum, the real spine of this is those particular colors. And maybe for you, it's a different set of colors. You know, it could be light blue, it could be pastel. It depends on the vibe that you're trying to create. So let me make up a hypothetical creator that we're gonna carry through this uh, thing today. And it's gonna be um, a creator who makes comics that are all about nature. So in that case, we're gonna say that natural looking colors, the colors of the natural world, browns, uh, autumns, maybe colors that kind of go with the seasons perhaps would be a real nice way of doing it. In terms of fonts, fonts could be things that uh, imply the, the natural world. In the case of our company, Coffin Comics, we're always choosing fonts for headlines and for subheadlines that have a kind of a heavy metal quality. We like to change them every year and change them with the seasons. And there's some that we call evergreen. These are fonts that we stick with for long periods of time. But again, and today we're creating this uh, creator who likes to tell nature stories in a natural environment. It's gonna be you know, browns, it's gonna be fonts that evoke that kind of feeling, perhaps in a contemporary setting as well. So I would also say that, um, what else would we say? I'd like to show another example. So another example of define your brand. I look at a company, a comic book company like Albatross Funny Books, headed up by Eric Powell and his uh, wife. And as soon as you see the logo, Albatross Funny Books, I think you know what you're getting into. It, it, there's, there'll be kind of a, a cool off kilter quality to it. Maybe it's a little, um, how would I define it? As a little uh, subcultural. Uh, and yet there's a humor to it. And I think that's instantaneously definable. And I think that's one of the goals is instantaneous recognition of what this is so that in your possible viewer, patron, customer's mind, they get it really fast. So oh, defining your brand has to do with perhaps the outcome and then all the visual input that people would get for your brand. You just line it all up and everything always aligns for all time. So that's uh, number one, define your brand. Number two, create a value proposition. You might, you might be hearing me say that and you're like, this sounds like crazy business school. Like what the heck is he talking about? But don't we all want some sort of value and don't we all kind of want a proposition from the people we patronize, whether it's a, a company, an individual creator? So in the case of Coffin Comics, again, our value proposition is we create fun and excitement in the domain of rock and roll inspired supernatural comic books. That's exactly what you're gonna get from Coffin Comics. Underneath it, all the activities that we take support that. So uh, there, I would also like to, um, I'm sort of collecting my thoughts on this whole value proposition. I wanna jump over to the the, this creator that we've created for the sake of this panel, the person who makes uh, nature-driven stories. And it reminds me of yet another company where I think you get right off the bat, you, you get the value proposition. There's the creator Jeff Smith and his company Cartoon Books. Look at that company's logo and I think instantaneously you get it. There's a, a cartoon-like quality uh, we know they make books, and there's a fun to it right off the bat. So it, and it's very relatable, very approachable. So in the value proposition of this, uh, the creator who like makes natural the natural world stuff, it's maybe it's like uh, stories, fun stories occurring in the natural world, and maybe that's part of the brand. So you know, it's like again, just riffing here. It's like uh, natural world comics. You kind of know what you'd be getting into, like right like that, especially if it's supported by imagery, branding, font choices that kind of give you that feeling, that feeling of being outdoors. So you definitely want to do that. You want to uh, create that value proposition. And what, what that helps you do is you, it tends to inform all your activities. So that's rule number two, create a value proposition. Rule number three, 
find your brand voice. Find your brand voice. So in Coffin Comics case, our company's case, it's really about fun, party, excitement. Uh, we're always all about like, you know, bigger than life, over the top kind of quality. And I think everyone's in on the fact that we're really doing it all for fun. You know, we are, uh, we're, we're doing this all for fun and for excitement and it really supports what we're doing. Uh, finding our brand voice. Now, finding your brand voice can be done, again, visually. It could be done through the text that you're writing. And going back to this example of the natural world comics, finding that particular voice would be in support of that, that look and that quality and that brand. So obviously, Natural World Comics isn't going to be talking about an urban experience, you know, uh, urban walking through an urban environment like a city. It's definitely going to be about the great outdoors and you know, visiting wonderful, wild, adventurous places. And the value proposition maybe is through Natural World Comics, you experience a world that's unknown. Maybe that's the value proposition. So you can liken it to your own experience and your what you like naturally and have a natural passion for. You could kind of move it into that direction. Uh, I'd also like to bring up within a subcategory of this creating a value proposition and that would be the three C's of branding which is clarity, consistency, and constancy. So what I mean by that is you want your message to be super clear and to communicate to the most people humanly possible. Uh, real simple words that almost anyone could understand and it would speak to a crowd of people. Again, natural world comics, you'd be hearkening to nature kind of stuff. In the, in the case of coffin comics, you know, it's really simple. We, you know, we have certain buzzwords. For example, a company slogan we have is called sworn. It's just that simple. And for people who are into it, they get it. It sort of, it means dedication, let's say. So uh, in the case of uh, the natural world, it'd be something like, it's coming to my mind, live outside. Who knows? Live out, yeah, Maybe I'm just riffing. Um, so three C's. Consistency is in a brand, no matter what the frequency of your output is, whether it's annual, biannual, monthly, weekly, or daily, be super consistent. Don't ever miss a deadline. Try to work in advance so that you get there. Now, I'm going to take a minute and address the elephant in the room. You might be saying to yourself, wait a minute, where's the actual nuts and bolts of how to make a brand? Well, I believe that I'm really telling you what the nuts and bolts are because I believe that it's all derived from philosophy. It's a philosophy and it's an approach. And once you really get those items set in your mind and it's clear, perhaps even written down, you could operate from it. If not, you're just going along in life and you're, you're knocking around and you're just getting what you get. But if you have a focus, a set of goals, and something you're heading toward, I think it's going to produce a whole different outcome for you. And so that speaks to the last part of the three C's, clarity, consistency, and constancy. So I don't know if that's a made-up word or not, but the whole premise there is like no matter what, you're always out there, you're always communicating, and you never stop. It's never, 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 never. It just repeat, 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 repeat. And you might be saying to yourself, well, you know, I'm only comfortable with X. Well, I gotta tell you and admit to you, if comfort is what you're after, maybe this, this line of work isn't for you because it really speaks to being constantly uncomfortable. Again, as comic book creators and independent comic creators, we're always competing with outrageous market forces that are always out there. And I believe constantly communicating a message and the message of your, com your company, your brand, your brand, prop your value proposition, your brand proposition, your brand, like always having it out there, it just starts getting in people's minds. So consider that. Next up, let's look at rule number four. Rule number four is keep it real and keep it authentic. So that's exactly what I mean. So by keeping it real, be your genuine self, what you really, really love, and have a blast doing it and let people really see it. I am a big advocate of not doing what you don't want to do because I think it's tougher just to get things going if you don't really want to do it. Now, if you're excited, 
about what you're doing and you're passionate about it, you're going to have some very, very difficult days anyway, and it might diminish some of your excitement. So at the very least, you have your burning passion to bring you forward on the tougher days. So yeah, so what I mean by keep it real and authentic is be your genuine self. I address this in other panels on marketing. I, I strongly don't believe you should try to guess the marketplace. For example, if superheroes are hot now or talking animals, you think, oh my God, I'm going to jump on this bandwagon. I don't know if that's the right philosophical reason. Like if you have intense passion for the particular subject, go ahead, do it. But if you're just guessing the market, I don't know if that's a good re way to spend your time. So let me give you an example. A bunch of creators were at Marvel Comics, the image guys, those founders, and they seem to have a natural passion for superheroic comics. What they didn't have a passion for was being told what to do and when to do it and how to do it. So they actually together went and formed a company called Image Comics. And at Image Comics, particularly in that early 90s generation of books, they were largely doing very pop culture superhero comic books. And they weren't much removed from what they were already known for. Jim Lee did a team book. McFarlane, Todd McFarlane did this interesting combination, maybe perhaps of Spider-Man, Batman, et cetera, et cetera. So they did what they love. You look at other storytellers that are independent creators that you love and adore. Let's take Terry Moore, for example. Uh, he does very personal stories, or the brothers Hernandez uh, of Love and Rockets fame. Uh, what they're really known for is telling very personal, small, quiet stories that have giant emotional resonance. Al Albatross Funny Books, again, Eric Powell, what I find that he does is uh, dark books with a, a sense of wry humor that are masterfully crafted. So again, you find your passion and uh, do that because really on, the, on some days you're not going to want to. So on those days, passion will really get you by. So create connection with authenticity and perhaps an aspirational journey. I've spoken about this particular topic of how one presents themselves in, in terms of their public persona. And I do tend to recommend that people consider being aspirational in their nature. You know, I think that we do live in a world where we have a lot in common. We all have challenges every day, uh, whether it's like in our personal lives, personal, professional, business lives, challenges, tragedies, and ups and downs. But I do think that if any of those items are shared in an aspirational sense as opposed to a grievance sense, uh, I think it really attracts a lot of people. That's my personal feeling and that's what I encourage people to consider, going in that type of direction. Um, and then, I, this might be obvious, but you know, again, I think the trap of not doing something that's personal to you, that you have great personal passion for, and instead you're trying to guess the market, I do believe that subconsciously people can tell that's disingenuous. So people can tell right off the bat, ultimately, okay, this is cynical. It's not authentic. So find your authentic self, what your heart desires, what you've always wanted to create, and start going after that and let your brand branch out from that. Again, I look at my career. Look, I realize what I produce is not war and peace, but I got to tell you, I have great passion for it. I love it. Every day I wake up, I'm like, I am so behind in telling the stories that I want to tell. There's so many stories. I was actually last couple days just working and as we sit, it's June 2021 and I'm crafting stories and overarching plots all the way up to 2026 and I'm impatient. I'm like, I want to get to these stories. So, you know, con consider that. So moving on, rule number five, let the work rule. So this is a particular topic that I have interest in, which is um, let's see here, your purpose, your purpose and your work should be obvious to people within one second. So let's go back to the um, Natural World Comics. I imagine Natural World Comics, you go to their website and there's some trees, slight animation, you know, bugs, fireflies, and uh, fun fonts that evoke kind of the outdoors. In a second, you would know what that is. Same thing, Coffin Comics, you come to our website, no doubt you could tell exactly what it's about. So just let the work do the job. Don't give a, or I'm going to make a recommendation. Don't, don't ever say that your stuff is the best thing since sliced bread. 
So that's giving like a value to it. I don't think it's the creator's place to do that. It's just my personal opinion. You are welcome to tell the facts and sometimes the facts are pretty intense. Let me give you a small example. Um, so what I'm saying is don't be boastful, be factual. So Todd McFarlane, uh, when Spawn number 300 came out last year in 2020 or thereabouts, he was able to claim that it was the longest running and among the best selling independent comic books forever. You know, it sounded like a boast, but it was a fact that was undeniable. So he was never saying Spawn is the best comic, but what he was saying is it's the longest running, highest selling. It's different. You know, it's not saying that I made the best superhero comic of all time, which I think is somewhat boastful. Um, I recommend the work, let the work do the talking. So that was something that I was personally taught when I was writing query letters to have people potentially read my material is basically just to say, hi, I'm Brian Plito. I have this story. It's about this and I'm looking for an opportunity to read it as opposed to saying, my name is Brian Plito. I just wrote the thing that's the best thing since sliced bread and it's going to make your life better if you read it. As you can imagine, the two have a different impact on the other side, the readers. So I believe strongly in let the work itself rule. And I know that we produce pretty loud, in your face kind of stuff. So I kind of, I'm pretty clear that it's like in a second, people are either attracted to it or they're repelled by it. And that's perfectly fine with me. Let's see here if there was anything else that I wanted to say on that particular topic. Yeah, yeah, your purpose should be uh, obvious to people within one second. Rule number six, stand out from the crowd. This sounds kind of obvious, right? Stand out from the crowd. Um, again, I'll, I'll liken any of the number of the creators I've referred to. So let me go back again. Uh, Todd McFarlane, the Spawn office known for Spawn. You take a look at that company and what they put out, and I think what you get is a combination of dark, compelling, exciting, state-of-the-art artwork, and really high design in the graphic design. And I think you get that about like that. And I think they've always had it relative to time. You know, 30 years in the game, that's still where they are. Albatross Funny Books, Eric Powell's company, same sort of thing. I think you know in a second where these guys are and they stand out because their identity is singular. Let me see if I could think of other creators. I mean, there's, there's just numerous examples of creators whose work is super distinct. Uh, here's another writer. Cullen Bunn, mostly known for horrific entertainment. I think you, by now you hear the word Cullen Bunn, writer, you're automatically assuming it's gonna be some interesting, compelling horror story. He has great passion for the genre horror. Um, this conversation about branding is somewhere between personal branding and company-based branding. But even on a personal level, you know, one can brand themselves. Um, an artist comes to mind that I like named Tara McPherson, uh, uh, an artist who does these really cute, cool, I don't know what you define the genre as, but as soon as you see her artwork, it's absolutely distinct. No one else looks like, no one other, no other person's work looks like that work. And you know it's in her vernacular, her language, her story. And I think it goes, it's not only in her work, it's how she brands herself, her website, the font choices, and even her presentation of herself. You know, for a long time there, she would always wear the Slayer shirt, and it just, all of it would go together and it'd be very distinct branding and uh, something that's instantaneously identifiable. Um, so in standing out from the crowd, have a focus and perhaps have a key message. I know that when Coffin Comics, our key message is simple, sworn, dedication. So we're dedicated to our audience, our audience is dedicated to us. It's kind of a one word value proposition, something, a catchphrase that we all kind of hooked on together. That catchphrase was actually a simplification of an original catchphrase uh, done by a gentleman, a writer named John Bruni. He coined the phrase sworn to the black. And we, uh, in recent years, boiled it all the way down to the word sworn, which kind of really gets it across. If a catchphrase works normally for your company, that's great. Uh, in our case, it just was something that happened really naturally in Evolved. Let's see here. Key message. Stand out from the crowd. Again, our message is fun and excitement in the domain of rock and roll inspired comics. But I'd like to assert that underneath that and the thing that really governs everything that what Coffin Comics is about is uh, great quality customer service. 
always striving for great quality customer service, and we're striving for trust with our, our patrons, our fans, our collectors, and uh, work very hard every day to keep that qualitative for everybody. It's the number one most important thing. You know, there's no sense having the greatest book in the world or, or anything unless people really trust you. And, and, and they could trust you if you are worthy of their trust. So what else was I going to say? Stand out from the crowd. Another topic to consider in your branding is to consider working inside a genre powerfully. So what I mean by that is, you know, you take a look at a guy like Stephen King. His branding is he works in do, predominantly in the domain of horror. He has some projects off that, but predominantly there. Uh, myself, I choose to work in whatever you'd call the genre that we do. I don't, I can't even tell you what the genre is. You know, it depends. Uh, our character La Muerta operates inside crime fiction. Lady Death currently has been going through the last couple of years where it's almost like some sort of heightened dark superheroic universe and you know another year another subgenre we'll explore in fact in the years to come i know we're going to be exploring some really interesting genres with the character as the voice of the genre um, and then carve a niche so inside of standing out from the crowd consider carving out a niche be wholly wholly unique to a certain area so for example i saw years ago in the 90s i saw a hole in comics I just didn't see these rock and roll inspired heavy metal comics. I just didn't see them. Kind of outlandish, kind of unapologetic, kind of at, you know out there and bold and crazy. So I made them. And uh, I continue to do that to this day because I, I still don't see exactly what it is we do. So we provide that for comics. And happily, there are enough people who enjoy it. So stand out from the crowd. And I guess let's do an example with the um, Natural World comics how one could stand out there in that branding. It could be in the social media presence, at conventions, maybe set up a couple of trees and an animatronic creature or two and you know, make, it, make it look like a forest. I don't know. That's just a thought. All right, moving on. Rule number seven. Rule number seven is live your brand. And... Uh, yeah, that one, please understand when we're having this discussion about branding, I wasn't like a textbook case of like learning this marketing and knowing the name and heading toward it. I actually did a lot of this simply based on instinct. So this idea of living your brand is something that just occurred naturally to me. And it's only now that I've been asked to do panels that I'm trying to look at and diagnose these series of actions and put them into a word. So live your brand. So by living your brand, you have an opportunity to grow a community around it. And in the case of Coffin Comics, uh, we, we've done just that. It's, it appears as if our lifestyle attracts other folks. And so that would be, we like hard rock, we like heavy metal, we like having a good time. Maybe we like to have like a beer or a drink or two. We like to commune with people. You know, we like to, uh, happily poke fun at each other. We like community. So all those things seem to be just part of the DNA of our company. What occurs to me there, um, we live here in the Phoenix area and there is a company out here led by an artist named Steam Crow, a guy named Daniel runs it. And literally his brand, Steam Crow has camps. So he invites his fans, followers, patrons, to actual camps that happen on weekends throughout the country where people kind of get together and it's sort of like an interesting steam crow. So it's an interesting variant on Boy Scouts of America. Everyone's adults, but they're getting together and they're doing all these activities, like adult versions of stuff that we would all do as Boy Scouts or Girl Scouts. And you know, it's so them. It, uh, like talk about instant identification. You pass them at a convention, you're like, boom, there they are, uh, the steam crow people. Um, so live your brand. Tell a story. Uh, use video. And you'll notice in this particular branding thing, again, I'm sticking to philosophy, but it should be painfully obvious to you that to live your brand, you're going to need a lot of support. And that'll include things like a website, a presence on social media. Perhaps your presence could be aspirational in nature. And it really is identified by the fonts, the colors, what you guys are all about. 
I mean, another small example, in our social media presence uh, in Coffin Comics, we have a thing called Metal Monday. So uh, our marketing manager, Jimmy Coffin, is finding cool memes and stuff to talk about in the domain of uh, heavy metal that we could all get a laugh on. So that's what we would do. Um, in the Living Your Brand idea, I want to share with you something that I find kind of fascinating, and it's this. I'm always posting what the heck I'm doing. So let's say, you know, me and a bunch of the Coffin crew are going to go see a band. I remember a couple years ago, we were seeing Ghost. So we're seeing the band Ghost. And we're documenting it, and we're showing people what we're doing, and we're just having a good old time. And what I learned was, not everybody likes the band Ghost. Not everybody likes to go to concerts. But for some reason, a lot of people like that we like going to concerts. And, and they live vicariously through it. So, uh, you know, be your authentic self. Go live your life. You know, invite people to come along. And you'd really, really be surprised. Because that never ceases to amaze me. You know, we'll go out and just do whatever the heck it is we do. And some people simply find it fascinating. And, uh, and you know, I'm sort of like that too myself. I, I have interests in stuff that you wouldn't imagine. I love watching food shows that have anything to do with travel. Love it, you know? I mean, but I, I, I don't cook. I barely cook. But I mean, I love to... I do like to travel and I do like to eat. So to see those two things together, I'll follow a different, you know, a bunch of different chefs. A guy like Guy Fieri, for example, or Anthony Bourdain, rest in peace. You know, just fun watching those travel logs. Um, in the live your brand domain, there could come a point in your brand where you let others tell your story. And that happens after you've achieved a, a certain visibility among people and a certain consistency. So let me give you an example. We've been in the crowdfunding sp space for about seven years. And we've done upwards of 25 crowdfunding projects. And we deliver the great majority of them within maybe up to 12 weeks uh, of the close of the campaign. Very fast, relatively fast turnaround. And at this point, we've now achieved a certain amount of trust and faith. And what's mir completely miraculous to me is that People will come into our orbit and ask about us, and then our fans and followers will just answer people. Oh yeah, they're okay. They'll definitely get it to you. Oh yeah, don't worry. You know, there's not a problem. Get in touch with customer service. So it's really remarkable how people kind of vouch for us because I guess we are presenting ourselves as vouchable, trustworthy, and and that's completely our goal. So in the live your brand moment, there does come a point where if you've been your word and you're consistent then other people kind of vouch for you. And, and I think that's mind boggling. Um, and then the key to this live your brand, and it's only something that I realize after these years, is the, the, the benefit of the word of mouth. And this speaks to what we were just talking about. You know, us being out there, myself as a complicator creator for the better part of 30 years, being at our current company, Coffin Comics, for the better part of seven, we have achieved a certain amount of trust. And it's remarkable how almost on a daily basis, we're experiencing a positive word of mouth from people who enjoy our goods. And uh, you know, I hope that in your career, you're able to have that. And I do look at a lot of the companies that I have um, pointed out to today and realize they have that as well. You know, With uh, Eric Powell, Albatross Funny Books, I believe that you could count on like a superior level of quality, compelling stories, good customer service. You know, Terry Moore, Strangers in Paradise, you just know that you're gonna get this intimate story that's gonna boggle your mind, and stuff like that. Uh, you know, McFarlane, as uh, much of a groundbreaker and industry leader he is, he really does deliver on the goods. It's not like he, he makes these factual boasts and doesn't deliver, he absolutely delivers. So there you have it. Um, and now I'm going to present rule number eight which is repeat rules number one through seven. And you might go, oh my God, Brian, why do I got to do that? And it's like, well, I got to tell you, there's no free lunch in comic books and you just got to repeat. And I'd also encourage you, if humanly possible as a creator, you got to be comfortable with a certain amount of repetition because you know, it's always a new story and it's getting it to the printer and all the processes in between, there is repetition. So by, uh, by repeating these things over and over again, the philosophy will begin to define all the actions you need to take. The philosophy will tell you what you should do, and the philosophy could tell you what you should not be doing, what doesn't really serve your purpose of being a brand. So, in conclusion, what I'd like to say to you is, good luck, absolutely good luck, 
And uh, for indie creators, how to create a powerful brand and brand yourself, that's exactly what we've been talking about today. I hope this has been informative. Uh, please feel free to like and share, subscribe, and to share this with anybody you know. You guys have been great. I've been Brian Polito, and this has been, for indie creators, how to brand yourself powerfully. Have a great day, everybody.